Hello and hello everyone, my name is Lucy and welcome to Books and Brushes. So while the whole of Booktube is doing unhauls, this is not one of those! <laughs> unhauls are getting super popular right now and that's fair enough, I understand why people like watching to see what books people discard as well as what people books take on. But you know, here I am being a basic bitch, we're doing a haul because I have collected a mass of 12 books. Six physical books and six Kindle books. Wow, that happened really neatly. Didn't mean it to. And I'm going to show you all the books in my haul. So I hope you're still up for book hauls, guys, because we're being classic. So the first book I have to share with you, I bought in Waterstones. Like, you know, I, I buy most of my books. And that book is Outside by Sarah Ann Dukes. Dukes. <laughs> Names. Reading names never gets easier. So this was one of those kind of very short description on a whim type buys. So it's basically about a girl who has never been outside and she just lives inside and reads her books and now she's going outside and that's basically all I know. I like the sound of it, it sounds very rapunzel -y and very, I don't know, I'm trying, it, it's making me think of something that I can't grasp for some reason. But I'm a very homebody, I'm a very hermit girl, I like being inside, I like my house, I like my books, this is where the food is and, and the warmth is and the comfy bed is, like why would, why would I go out there, it's scary, it's scary out there, there are people. But I find it really interesting to think of, you know, someone who's only been in isolation and inside to then venture into the world and I, I like that concept, it's simple but I haven't read a book solely based on that yet and yeah like I said I'm looking forward to this almost like a rapunzel -y retelling of a girl who is going to go and discover the outside world. One of my favourite games actually, Portal, is about a girl who has never been outside and I don't know, I like heroines or heroes like that. There's something about the discovery and something about leave, because I don't leave my home place, it's like I'm starting where she is and I'm going out, obviously I've been outside. Yeah, it just sounds interesting to me and hopefully it'll be a nice read. It's very short, so hopefully it'll be, it'll be a fun little dystopian and I'm guessing it's going to be very otherworldly, very great prose and writing, almost dramatic, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Next I have a book that I just saw it and immediately, like, no hesitation, bought it. And that is Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. Oh yes, this, this looks slightly familiar, doesn't it? Hmm. That's because last year I read One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Now, I loved this book. I loved it way more than I expected to. I just loved the mystery and the writing and the plot. It, it was just fun. It was a book that was so fun to read. And um, see that there was like this companion, I immediately bought it because I have now some faith in Karen M. McManus that she can deliver a punch again. It's a companion novel, so it's set in the same like world, but in a completely different town with completely different characters. So this one is, as far as I know, about a girl who moves to this new, like, really quiet, small town. And, like, every so often these, like, homecoming queens, these, like, teenage girls are going missing. And now that she's in this town, it's like solving that mystery and discovering all the secrets that this little town seems to have. Again, it's that plot that is intriguing and because I enjoyed her other book so much, I just had to have this one. And I hope it's even half as good as One of Us is Lying because I really enjoyed that book so much and then this one will just be a fun book and I have faith in it. So it's nice to have a book that I believe will do good. I'm not expecting the earth, I'm just expecting to have fun. And because apparently the One of Us is Lying trend kind of kicked in right now, the other book I saw at the same time was This Lie Will Kill You. So obviously an intriguing title, but right here, right here, for fans of One of Us is Lying. So I, I bought this one as well. <laughs> apparently I'm on a bit of a thriller mystery kick, I don't know, but I'm expanding my reading tastes a bit more, you know, I'm buying more contemporaries and more thrillers and more mysteries, you know, things I wouldn't have bought as much before. So I'm really excited for this one, it's a completely different author, I didn't even say. Chelsea Picture. Sorry Chelsea, I completely blanked on saying your name. But yeah, I mean I have no idea if this writer will be anything similar, but I enjoyed One of Us is Lying so much that I'm just, if these books can deliver that same feeling and that same joy, I'm happy to have an own them. So, Fingers crossed. Now this is a book I've seen on booktube before and I've been umming and ahhing for so long, 
Saw it in Waterstones. And here we are, Orphan Monster Spy by Matt Killeen. Now this one seems to be getting great reviews, people seem to really like this book and the plot does sound really cool. So it's about this young like Jew girl in Nazi Germany and she's infiltrating and basically going to be a spy in this young elite school for girls where all the Nazis children go to grow up. And she is there to spy on them and learn secrets and intelligence and basically blend in and be a spy amongst all these girls. And I find that idea so interesting. World War II books, like historical fiction books, seem to be really, really popular. There's so many World War II books. But this is a different idea. I like the plot, like the girl in this boarding school being a spy. Like, will she be found out? There's gonna be a lot of tension. And I just think this could really deliver something powerful, action-packed and intense. And I'm looking forward to it. So I'm growing my historical fiction collection and hopefully Orphan Monster Spy will be a perfect historical fiction for me. So the next book I have is The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James. Now this is about two characters who are like the only youngsters left. At a certain time, like infertility just becomes rife in the world. Like all the women just can't get pregnant. The human race is like dying out because we can't have children and so they're being like extremely doted on by everyone because they're the only two youngsters left, the only hope to continue the race and it seems like there's this big secret they uncover and what will they do to continue the race of the world and save everything that was lost. It's funny because I was in Waterstones and I saw this book and another book with a very similar kind of plot, it was the only girl left so again that whole she was the only one. I'm thinking about buying that one so stay tuned to see that one in a new book haul. But yeah, this seemed a very classic dystopian idea, but I'm interested to see what this will deliver and what these two characters discover and what they're going to do. I guess it was a whim, it was just one of those buys that sounded like something I would like and here I have it. So I do that a lot more these days than I used to. I used to buy only buy books that I meticulously researched, but nowadays it's like I just want to read the books and see what they're like and we'll find out. <laughs> this whole extinction of the human race seems to be an idea that few authors have dabbled and played with and I like to see where different people take it because it is a scary idea. Imagine if we couldn't continue this race. I mean a lot of people would think that's great that we are a plague. Hopefully I'll get that other book as well but for now this one's a new addition to my shelves and I have no idea when I'll get to it but that's the same for every book. And our last physical book is actually a sequel. So we have The Everlasting Rose by Donyell Clayton. Now I have The Bells by Donyell Clayton, which I haven't yet read. So I bought this a little bit prematurely, but you know, I'll probably like it. <laughs> Either way, I saw the sequel come out and I just really wanted to buy it. Now I have the two and I can just binge them. I don't know if there's another one coming out, I don't know, I didn't even know there was going to be a sequel to The Bells, but here we are! So I will have to research if there's like a trilogy of this, is it going to be like a long series? Who knows, it could be a duology, then I'd have the whole set. And either way, I really like the idea of this world and it seems to be such a popular book. And the description of this doesn't give too much away, but it seems like a lot has progressed. And I love the idea of the beauty, I think it's really fascinating. So. I'm not mad about it, I am glad that I picked this book up and I really really hope that I like these two books. So the first Kindle book I have to show you is The Extinction Trials by S.M. Wilson. Now this one's hook, if you will, was Hunger Games meets Jurassic Park. I didn't need much more than that, to be honest. I've also seen this book physically in Waterstones, but I got such a great deal on it on Kindle that I just, I just bought it. So it seems like there's this contest and these people, these candidates, these humans are thrown into this like jungle or world filled with dinosaurs and they have to survive so I have no idea what this is going to be like but it sounds really fun, it sounds like a match made in heaven and it seems to be getting really good reviews so I'm looking forward to reading that, I think it would be super fun and I know like kind of at the back of my mind that my boyfriend would love this concept because he absolutely loves dinosaurs, he loves Jurassic Park and he really liked The Hunger Games, one of the series I've managed to get him to read. So, secretly I'm also thinking, hmm, I could get him to read this. 
It sounds really fun and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so this next one is a really strange, whimish kind of book that I saw, and that is The Boy Who Painted the World by El Melody J. Bremen. Struggle. So not only did the cover for this probably draw me in, but it seems to be like a child or middle grade book, but this description, if this doesn't sound like something I would love, then I don't know what to tell you. So it's about this little homeless boy called Indigo who's kind of just living on the street, fighting for every day, and he dreams of becoming an artist. And him and his best friend Jade, one day she goes missing, she gets like, arrested for shoplifting, and he has to kind of leave his box and go on this adventure to find her. He discovers art along the way, and this book is about friendship and family and art and living your dreams and... I mean, come on. <laughs> that description just had me. You know, if you've watched any of my videos, that I love books with art in them, because I'm an artist, and I, I'm look, really looking forward to reading it. A book so central about art. It sounds really, really fun, really sweet, really deep, really meaningful, and yeah, I really, really hope it, it's good, because it sounds so good. I really don't want it to be a let down. But yeah, it's something totally different, not got a book like it, and I'm really looking forward to it. So this next one, again, I got this kind of, I had a really good deal on it, so I just snapped it up. And that is Birthright by Jessica Ruddick. Now this description is a little complicated, so it's going to be a bit hard to paraphrase it, and I'm going to do my best. It's definitely a fantasy, like paranormal, urban fantasy kind of book. So as far as I gather, this book is about a 16 year old girl called Ava, and on her 16th birthday she becomes a seeker, which is like the Grim Reaper's foot soldier, and she has to go around and select the souls that are worthy to become angels. So she's like kind of killing people, and she's like filled with guilt over this but she does it because she has to. And then there's this one guy she really likes that she ends up having to submit because the soul is worthy. And then she doesn't, she like hides him and protects him from the Grim Reaper. And she has like this showdown with him. And there's like, how far will she go to protect him? And <laughs> the description I have in front of me is like real confusing. I can't remember what description I bought it on. I don't think it was this one, but it was another description that was equally intriguing and yeah, I have no idea what the hell it's going on about. But that idea of like this, the seeker to the Grim Reaper and she's trying to hide him from the Grim Reaper and it says about this showdown and that sounds epic and like, I don't know, it sounds really strange and different and I have absolutely no idea it's gonna be a fantasy to remember and it just sounded really cool. It also gave me like scythe vibes. Obviously anything that gives me a Neil Schusterman vibe is gonna resonate. So yeah, it sounds really strange, really bizarre and I'm looking forward to seeing what that is all about. This next one I saw on booktube a long time ago. The two authors seem really, really sweet and I saw it, this book on sale, and I was like, mine, I'm having it, it's mine. And that is The Rule of One by Ashley and Leslie Saunders. So this book is about future United States where there is this strict law that every family is only allowed one child, China style. <laughs> but like, this rule is really strictly enforced and no other children are allowed. And there are these twins that are born. So these twins have lived their whole lives in secret. They have grown up switching places and pretending to be one person, which sounds so intricate and, and difficult. <laughs> and they've grown up their entire lives pretending their mother has died to protect this secret, their dad, oh, they're basically, now they're on their own and the secret has been found out. They have been outed and they are on the run because they're basically fugitives, they are not allowed to exist and they are running. Now that concept sounded so good, like that is a great idea. You know with the twins it's always like, oh have you ever pretended to be each other kind of thing and in all the movies where they do the swaps, you know there's about a thousand movies that do that. But this takes it and like dystopianifies it up and I just, it sounds really cool. These two twins having to pretend to be each other and now being outed and on the run. It sounds like my kind of story, 100%, and it's one of the ones I'm most looking forward to, I think. It just sounds really, really cool, and I'm looking forward to reading that one. I have no idea when I'll get to it, but 
I never do. The next Kindle book I have here is Nora and Kettle by Lauren Nicole Taylor. Now this one was a strange on the whim buy because the description again doesn't give me too much but I was intrigued enough and it was a good enough like price. I think this one was even free that I just I wanted it so here we are. So this description isn't going to sound nearly as good as it would in the written form. <laughs> Reading the synopsis for this is going to be entirely much better than what I'm about to spew, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so it seems to be set just after World War II, and there are these two girls. One girl is a Japanese American girl, and there's a lot of racism towards her after the Second World War because of events and she's being outed from her orphanage because they didn't want one drop of Japanese blood. The other girl is the daughter of a civil rights lawyer and these two girls kind of inevitably meet and it is as destructive as it is healing for them and their bond will change everything and you, yeah you get the idea. So the description is not too telling and it's certainly different but like, I've never read a book like that at all. Definitely a historical fiction book, again with like a homeless child thing, but I'm interested to see what these two characters are going to bring and what their meeting will do. Like, I can't tell you why this book interests me, it just sounds so different that I had to give it a go and to see what it is. If it's rubbish, I, will, I could just DNF it, it's fine, but yeah, it sounds so different, you never know, maybe this is a gem and maybe this interaction between these girls will be really inspiring. Next one is another kind of urban fantasy that is super complex that is going to be difficult to wrap my mind around in a synopsis and then parrot it back to you but I think Birthright went okay so we're going to do this one. So this one is The Change by Taylor Branton. So there's this girl living her normal life, going to law school and then all of a sudden she is unbounded. So it's like this group of like paranormal people and there are two distinct groups and she has to decide between them. There's almost like this war between these two paranormal factions and there's also like big corporations out to destroy the unbounded and eradicate the gene entirely. So she's trying to survive and trying to pick which bet she thinks is best. So it seems like she's a pretty powerful unbound and she's trying to protect her mortal family and trying to keep all this at bay. She's just trying to survive from everyone that's out to get her of the people that want to use her as pawns and she's going to have to play this delicate dance of survival. It seems really interesting, it seems really different again and it seems epic. I just went on like a Kindle spree here guys, like a lot of these were really cheap, free, and I was like yes, 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 I will take all of those. And that is the end of my list. Anyway, I hope that this haul was good enough and you enjoyed it. I know it wasn't an unhaul, I know I'm not jumping on the trendy bandwagon guys, I'm sorry, but I find I find things difficult to let go. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in a position right now to be unhauling books, like I love my collection. One day I might get rid of a few books, like I have a couple in mind that I could get rid of, but literally it's a few, like three come to mind. That's not very many and there's not really a point. I hope to see you in my next video, which will be the March wrap up. And I've got, I've got some things to say. The Shatter Me series concluded. If you wanna hear my thoughts on that, then you gotta subscribe, you gotta like, you gotta comment. And I will see you there. See you next time. Bye.